Hello everybody, welcome to Today in Media, where we highlight the five stupidest hot takes from media personalities and outlets alike. Today we have our Pansy edition, where Chris Cuomo and Jimmy Kimmel almost cry on camera. I think one might have actually cried. I'm your host, Will Ricadella. And I'm Amber Athey. Let's hop right into number five. We have a CNN tweet where they've interjected race into the Las Vegas shooting. Um, this has been a narrative of the media. I don't know what this guy's skin tone has to do with him being a, a complete nutcase. Well, not to mention the fact that white men are actually underrepresented in terms of committing mass shootings. They commit a smaller percentage of overall mass shootings compared to their representation in the population. But I th and a lot of the implication here is that somehow that you know white people will explain it away as a lone wolf, as if there's some ideology that white people get together and they say, hey, if there's a mass shooting by a white guy, let's just explain it away. What's the ideology behind it? You know, Islam is an ideology that drives people to you know to kill for political ends. There is no such thing among white people. I mean, I don't know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm no expert or anything, but... Yeah, I mean, I'm not a criminologist, but right. I think it's interesting that this op-ed was written by a Muslim, and she loves to generalize about all white men, but if you say the same thing about Islam or, uh, you know, committing terrorist acts, all of a sudden it's, you know, not all Muslims. Well, good thing nobody takes CNN seriously anyway. It's true, it's a good point. Right. Moving on to number four, we have MSNBC Stephanie Rule. Uh, explaining why hunters use gun suppressors. They were preparing to loosen gun regulations to allow people to use these silencers to make them more available, which, as you because can the imagine... Because their ears were hurting. Because the hunters, their ears how much were worse. hurting. So there, Stephanie Rule is just blatantly mocking hunters. I don't know why she thinks severe hearing loss is funny. Do you know why that's so funny? This is fascinating. Brace yourselves, everyone. This is how journalism works. What in God's name? What, what is that? I don't know. It's a joke. MSNBC is a joke. I, she looks like she was on a bender, a heavy bend. She does look a little drunk and maybe some pills thrown in there. I don't know. Some sort of a... Uh, something. Valium, right. maybe? Uh, something to take you're a off. kook, Stephanie, but you're still pretty good looking. I love you. Whatever. Let's move on. <laughs> All right. We're going on to uh, number three. We have a CBS tweet where they actually were like, I mean, they pretty much said that they don't know anything about automatic weapons because they said they're automatic rounds. Right? Yes, yes. Rounds are, have nothing to do with the rate of fire of a weapon or its mechanics or anything. And CBS should probably have nothing to do with the news because they're awful at it. For, it wasn't even an automatic weapon that he had. It was a semi-automatic weapon and he used, a, I think, a, a gun stock, right? Yeah, he used a uh, bump stock, which... Yeah basically allows the semiotic weapon to fire faster by using right. the physics of the gun to pull the trigger faster. Right. So clearly CBS has no idea what they're talking about. I think it's hilarious that all of these mainstream media people are pushing gun control and crying on camera about how many lives they want to save and they can't even tell you the difference mm -hmm. between a pistol and a rifle. Right, and it, it, the only thing gun control will do is ensure that criminals like this guy will have guns and law-abiding citizens won't. So think about that for five minutes. Something to consider. Yeah. And also <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Because you're stupid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Getting it now. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm on board. <laughs> All right, number two. We have Chris Cuomo having an actual meltdown on CNN today because he's really upset that Donald Trump and OMB director Mick Mulvaney called out some of the misinformation coming out of CNN. You do not bring electricity back to an island of three and a half million people in two weeks when you're starting from practically nothing, which is what they are doing. Nobody Listen. suggests otherwise. Well, good. Nobody good. suggests otherwise, Mick. Good. That's why I'm saying don't call it fake. Don't call it fake, because it's not fake. Everybody gets that it's going to take time. Everybody gets that after a disaster, there's always lag and that you had infrastructure problems there. But you know what also people get who are experts in the fields that they're covering now and they're down there, whether it's Honoré or the others? You could have had more people there. You could have had different distribution of assets sooner. You could be doing more now. The need is great and adjustments need to be made. And at the same time that the president in the White House was denying that, you were doing exactly that. No, you were bringing in Buchanan, and you were bringing no, in no, more military no, 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 infrastructure to do it. And that was the right move. If, you, if you it was the right move to bring more people in. You, to you know that if you were on the ground. Be happy. Weird that Chris Cuomo is so defensive about being called fake news. You would start to wonder if maybe there's a little bit of truth to it. I actually thought he was going to start to cry a little bit there. <laughs> but I mean,
mean, I've been on top of this Puerto Rican narrative, and it is fake news. I mean, at one point he said, you could have had more people there. It was like Chris Cuomo wasn't listening to what Mike Mulvaney was saying. He was saying that the, the supplies and the people are there. There's no infrastructure to get it anywhere. There's no way to get new gasoline. The place was a mess before, and this just exposes the mess, the mess for what it was. I mean, you know, what, you know, government was the problem there, and then people expect, oh, government, should, you know, is, is the only solution. Yeah, well, they had 10,000 FEMA people there from pretty much the second mm -hmm. after the storm went through, and Chris Cuomo's whining about how they needed more people, right. and then gets mad when the administration says, well, actually, we've had pretty much the most people we could have. It's just that all of the roads are down. You mm -hmm. can't get trucks through to distribute supplies. Needless to say, I'm not surprised that Mario Cuomo is his dad and that Andrew Cuomo is his brother. All right. Moving along, we have uh, numero uno, and we have the all-knowing, all-powerful, ubiquitous, and omnipresent Jimmy Kimmel. They say it's inappropriate to be talking about it because it's too soon. Well, maybe it's too soon for you because deep down inside, you know, in your heart, you know you bear some responsibility for the fact that almost anyone can get any weapon they want. Now you want to cover yourself until the storm of outrage passes. You can go back to your dirty business as usual. The only thing that Jimmy Kimmel is exposing here is deep down he hates this country because it's built on natural law. It's built on the right to bear arms. And this is a common theme with the left. They, they hate this country. Am I right? Well, it's pretty interesting that in both of Jimmy Kimmel's tearful soliloquies, both his one on Obamacare and the one today, he managed to blame everybody except for the shooter mm -hmm. in Las Vegas. It's somehow my fault a lawful gun owner that this guy, this crazy guy, staked out a hotel for months and then killed dozens mm -hmm. and dozens of people. That, that's ridiculous and it's insulting and offensive to every legal gun owner in this country. I mean, from the founders all the way up until now, anyone who takes the oath for, uh, for the, to defend the Constitution, anybody who stands for the Pledge of Allegiance, he just said is responsible for this shooting. Jimmy Kimmel ought to be ashamed of himself. He's also terrible and he probably shouldn't be on TV anymore. And I can still tell that you're fat, so stop trying to hide it. He also probably got this talking point from Chucky e. Schumer, just like all of his Obamacare talking right. points. And you know why it's too soon to talk about gun control, Jimmy Kimmel? Because idiots like you on TV still think that a bump stock converts a semiotic weapon, semi-automatic weapon to a fully automatic weapon. And you think that silencers or suppressors would make this shooting worse, thinking that it makes a gun quiet. Give me a break. That's just, why it's too soon. You don't know anything. I totally agree. I just want to let everybody know that he's an expert on health care because his kid was sick. Yes. Dr. Kimmel. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, if you ever want to know what uh, Jimmy Kimmel's saying, you can come here. He'll be on the list again, probably. <laughs> you can find us on the Daily Caller website. My name's Will Riccadella at Will Ricci on Twitter. I'm Amber Athey at Amber underscore Athey on Twitter. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Have a great night. <laughs>